Hi, this is ultrasound application in lower limb, part one, proximal part of the leg. Uh, as we studied last uh, one and a half months for upper limb, and we did it two weeks for lower limb. This is the first PowerPoint uh, lecture for lower limb, um, but I will start to, uh, with proximal part of the leg. So let's continue. Uh, as you know, uh, my name is Hegyeon Kim. I'm pediatric physiatrist at Columbia University Medical Center. And this is my disclosure. Anterior part of the thigh, which include iliopsoas, quadriceps, saltorius, and femoral nerve. Let's start with the femoral nerve anatomy. Femoral nerve is the largest branch of the lumbar plexus. It, come from, it comes from dorsal division of anterior rami of L2, L3, L4. In the pelvis, it usually passes lateral border of a psoas. And then as it comes down, it runs between iliacus and psoas in the pelvis. After it passes iliac ligament and femoral nerve stays lateral to the femoral sheath, where is uh, where are femoral artery and femoral vein. And this part of femoral nerve supplies iliacus and pectineus. After then, a femoral nerve will divided into two by lateral circumflex uh, femoral artery at two centimeter below inguinal ligament. So here, inguinal ligament here, and then two centimeter below, uh, there is lateral circumflex femoral artery is gonna go around and divide this femoral artery in two. One is anterior division. It gives two cutaneous nerve. Uh, one is medial, cutaneous nerve branch, the other one is intermediate cutaneous nerve. And it also gives one motor uh, branch to saltorius. Then posterior division uh, will give one cutaneous branch, which is saphenous nerve, and four muscular branch, which is four, four cutaneous nerve, uh, quadriceps nerves. Then femoral nerve also supplies hip joint and knee joint. Hip joint supplied by nerve two rectus femoris, knee joint supplied by nerve two three vestus muscles. Once again, this is the uh, lateral side, so navy, nerve, artery, vein, and then there's another saphenous vein above the pectineus. So psoas muscle uh, origin is the L, uh, T12 L4 bodies of the vertebra. So when you try to do psoas muscle injections, you have to pay attention not to touch the kidney, which is gonna be similar level with the psoas muscles. And it inserted into, onto lesser trochanter of the femur here, lesser trochanter. And then so oh, ilia, Iliacus also, origin is the iliac fossa and insert onto lesser trochanter of the femur. So iliopsoas end up uh, inserting on the same lesser trochanter. So here, let's take a look at ultrasound findings. When I try to find out iliopsoas, I usually start from ASIS. So this is the ASIS. You can see bone shadow, so you cannot see anything below the ASIS. And then this is the medial side, since you can see the abdominal muscle. And this is the uh, abdominal content. And then uh, you can see my probe on the AI ASIS, and I'm gonna scan down to AIIS. When you scan down, um, you need to move your probe slightly medially but uh, downward until you see the uh, ASIS, AIIS. Uh, as we know, uh, saltorius and tensor fascia lata, the origin is uh, ASIS. Therefore, as soon as you scan down, 
First muscle you can see on the media, medial side is a saltorius, lateral side is tensofacial artery. Saltorius looks a reversed triangle. And um, once you scroll down, uh, saltorius size gets bigger, tensofacial artery gets bigger. And then by the time you come to AIIS, you start to see iliacus. You can imagine this is iliac bone, iliacus is gonna pop out. And then you continuously scroll down once you see AIIS until you see the femoral head is gonna be this level. And then you will see mushroom shape or ice cream cone shape of a beautiful iliosuas muscle, which lies lateral to femoral artery and nerve. So let's take a look at the following slide. So now my probe is, is coming down to AIIS. Let's take a look at the ultrasound findings. Now you can see saltorius here, but AIIS is uh, uh, below saltorius. So as I said be before, when you see AIIS, Middle, uh, medial to the AIS is iliacus. This is your iliacus. And then reverse triangle shape, this is a saltorius. And then next to lateral to saltorius is the tensofacial lata. So saltorius tensofacial lata origin was ASIS. You see here is pocket between the two muscles. That pocket has a lateral femoral cutaneous nerve here. So initially lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, right after it comes out inguinal ligament, initially it's on the saltorius. As you go down about, by the time you go five centimeter below ASIS, actually uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is in the pocket, which means uh, lateral to the saltorius. So when you wanna see, uh, or when you can see lateral femoral cutaneous nerve in this pocket, your probe is about five, a little more than five centimeter from the ASIS down. Um, then you can find out lateral femoral cutaneous lat is uh, lateral to the saltorius medial to the tensofacial artery in between two muscles. And then here you can also see hazy, haziness or hazy part above the AIIS. That must be the rectus femoris uh, tendon since AIIS uh, where rectus femoris starts. So now I scan down more to the groin area until I see the femoral head. So as I said, femoral head, now I see it and cartilage is there. And then above the femoral head, you can see nice mushroom shape or ice cream cone. This is the iliosuas, especially this part is the iliacus on the, in the corner to the medial side, this is the suas part. So iliosuas sits lateral to the femoral artery and nerve, femoral artery and nerve, lateral to that. And then below the saltorius, medial to the rectus femoris, above the femoral head. So when you are a beginner, initially, many times I was not able to figure out which one is iliosuas, which one is rectus femoris. So you can imagine iliosuas is gonna anchor or insert onto less uh, trochanter. So as you scan down, iliosuas is gonna disappear and rectus femoris is gonna get bigger. So you can move your probe distally to differentiate iliosuas and rectus femoris, or you can scan medially to identify the femoral nerve and artery. And then once you see the femoral nerve and artery, then that next to, to that structure is iliosuas. So even the patient who has severe spasticity in their iliosuas and rectus femoris, 
sometimes you don't see any facial line, then you should do, use this landmark femoral artery nerve saltorius. Usually saltorius is not that much spastic and then scan down up and down or scan uh, medially and laterally to identify your psoas. Make sure the femoral head you identify. But sometimes as a pediatric physiatrist, we scan down and sometimes I don't see femoral head on the uh, underneath of the iliosus. It is a little away from that. That means this patient uh, femoral uh, head is out of a socket, which means subluxation, hip subluxation, or hip dislocation is going on. So you can actually assess their hip condition while you are trying to do uh, chemoneurolysis under ultrasound guidance. So now you clear that how you can find out iliosoas. Now let's um, look at the video. And then this is the ASIS, you can see it, and then um, bone shadow. And this is the abdominal muscle. This is my patient's, um, the video clips. So you can see severe constipation here. And then I'm gonna scroll down. Then we come down. So here, AIS passed, and then you can see nice, ice cream cone, this is iliacus, this is psoas, this is rectus femoris starting point, reverse triangle saltorius, this is gonna be tensor facial ara, this is gonna be glutus medius. So now, when you look at this part, it's all, sometimes you, if you're a beginner, you don't know what is what. So you're gonna scan medially, laterally, up and down. So I'm gonna scan medially to find the femoral nerve and artery. So here is a pulsating, so that must be femoral artery. Next to white stuff is femoral nerve. Therefore, I identify that this uh, nice must ice cream cone shape is the iliosoas. My needle is coming through the saltorius and then tip of the needle is in the middle of the iliosoas. Then I infuse the toxin. So let's take a look one more time, ASIS, and then immediately AIIS, and then you can see HG part, which is the uh, rectus femoris uh, tendon over there. This above the AIIS, this is iliacus, saltorius, tensor fascia lata, gluteus medius. This is a bone sh shadow, and then we continuously scan down until we see femoral head. Scan down, femoral head, stuff here. And then this is the psoas. This above this one is the iliacus. This is saltorius. And this area is going to be rectus femoris. This area is going to be femoral artery nerve. Let's see. Here, oops. Uh, let's scan down. I was going to show rectus femoris a little bit. Coming down, down. Now I'm scan medially to see pulsating femoral artery and femoral nerve, iliacus, il psoas, needle coming into iliosoas area and then leave the tip of the needle in the middle and I infuse the uh, toxin, the iliosoas and it's gonna diffuse to psoas muscles. So I did the injection and then let's go to the next one. So now let's talk about lateral femoral cutaneous nerve which is the dojal branch of the L23. And as we already studied, usually you can find out lateral femoral cutaneous nerve two centimeter below, uh, medial from the ASIS. And then it's gonna pass the inguinal ligament. And what, once lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is out of pelvis, it's gonna uh, running over lateral aspect of the thigh. And then it initially lies on the Saltorius is going to be sometimes you can see two or three little dots 
above the saltorius. And then by the time you come down to the femoral head area where you look for the iliopsoas, which will be the about five, a little more than five centimeter from the ASIS. And then one, 0.2 or a little more than one centimeter medially, you will identify lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is in the pocket between saltorius and tensor fascia lata. This is the area you're gonna see the uh, iliopsoas, saltorius, lateral femoral cutaneous in between saltorius and tensor fascia lata. So this is ASIS and then five centimeter below, and you found the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve between the tensor fascia lata and saltorius, there is a pocket for that. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. So as we scroll down one quarter from the uh, AIIS, you can see rectus femoris, big one over there, next one. You continue to scroll down with your scan down distally, you can see in the uh, distal two third from the AIIS to knee, knee, you can see three muscles, rectus femoris, VMO, and then um, vastus intermedius. If you go further, you can see saltorius over there. Saltorius is gonna meet the um, gracilis. So then they run together to uh, make pes anterior with the semi tendinosus below the knee. Now let's talk about the medial part of the thigh. Hip adductors, gracilis, pectineus, saltorius. So we're gonna start study. So obturator nerve is coming from L to four and it has anterior branch and posterior branch. And anterior branch lies between adductor longus and brevis, you can see here femoral nerve artery after the pectineus, adductor longus underneath is brevis. Ad between adductor longus brevis, there's anterior branch of the obturator nerve, which is gonna supply pectineus, adductor longus brevis, gracilis, and cutaneous uh, branch to the medial side of the knee. So mostly obturator nerve, sensor br sensory branch is very small, which is the medial part of the knee. Therefore, uh, many people uh, like to do obturator nerve block since the uh, uh, sensory brain, sensory supply is very uh, small um, space. And then the posterior branch is gonna be between brevis and magnus, and then it will supply adductor magnus, external obturator muscles, and hip joints. So this is a video, and this is the adductor longus and brevis. My needle is in between longus and brevis and the fascia line. Mostly the obturator nerve is, uh, um, I see that uh, pectineus, there is some kind of a triangle, pectineus here, adductor longus, brevis, the here it comes from here, it runs through the um, fascia line. Let's take a look. Um, and then you can actually, my needle is attached to the nervous stimulator, so you can actually see his leg is uh, adapting. So I'm in the anterior branch of the obturator nerve. So you can see my needle on the obturator nerve anterior branches. Okay. Then I'm gonna to go to the next slide. So still my probe is in the uh, adductor longus, above the adductor longus. And then uh, most of the motor point of adductor longus is in the about one centimeter or one finger breadth from the inguinal ligament. So you are not doing injection to relax the spastic in hip adductor, not in the middle, you have to be very proximal part of the muscles, which is just, a, just below the inguinal li uh, ligament. So I'm gonna show, I'm using the nervous stimulator. My needle is very close to the inguinal ligament and above the adductor longus to look for the uh, obturator nerve motor point to the adductor longus. So now you're getting good. Mm -hmm. You can see hip adduction without the, uh, any other 
uh, muscles are moving. So that was motor point for hibedactyl longus. Okay, I'm gonna go to next. So well, hip adductors we call the hamburger muscles since they are layer by layer they are arranged. So this is the uh, lateral side, which means um, femoral artery is there. We are continuously moving uh, probe to the medial side. So femoral artery, and then nerve artery. and pectineus and the adductor longus brevis magnus. So then nerve artery, um, then this one uh, is gonna be saphenous vein and then uh, adductor longus brevis magnus. So actually um, I apologize that this uh, is the nerve, it's not the nerve, nerve has to be lateral side. So nerve here, artery here. So I think this must be a tendon or fascia line. So that is not really a femoral nerve, I'm sorry. So, and then I'm gonna, if, as you see the hamburger here, so this is adductor longus brevis magnus here. Adductor longus, adductor longus, brevis, magnus, and this is a pectineus. So this area usually obturator nerve comes out, anterior branch and posterior branch. And this is a venous vein. This is a femoral artery here and femoral nerve here. Okay, then I'm gonna go to next to one, next to uh, the anterior branch. Okay, so now this is the video, media size. So once again, femoral nerve artery and then obturator, I'm sorry, this is gonna pectineus and then uh, longus is gonna pop out, let's see. Pectineus, longus. Brevis, gracilis, this is the gracilis, and then through the fascia line, you can see off train ner nerve is running. Okay, stop here, and then we go to the next one. So as you come down continuously from the gracilis, which is here, comes down continuously, then if you put the probe in the tooth, third down from the inguinal ligament, you will see two muscles. One is gracilis, and then lateral side is gonna be saltorius. So saltorius gracilis meets together, and then uh, they run continuously below the knee to make pes and sedius here along with the semi-tendinosus. Mm, let's talk about the lateral aspect of thigh. Tensor facial lata and vestus lateralis. So my model is a, uh, on sideline position and greater trochanter, we're coming down uh, on uh, one quarter down to the knee. And you can see tensor facial lata is winding down and it's uh, attached to the iliotibial band and vestus lateralis. Let's talk about the posterior part of the thigh. And then initially superficial one, gluteus maximus, medius, me. And then we're gonna go to minimus. So this is gluteus maximus, surface of ilium, and then sacrum and coccyx is gonna origin. And then it runs to iliotibial band and then gluteal tuberosity on the femur is the insertion. And then supply, the nerve supply is inferior gluteal nerve because it piriformis above the uh, piriformis superior gluteal nerve uh, below the um, piriformis is gonna be inferior gluteal nerve. So inferior gluteal nerve is gonna supply gluteus maximus Gluteus maximus function is a hip extension, external rotation, abduction, adduction, 
only gluteus maximus has no function on internal rotation of the hip. And gluteus medius and minimus function is same, hip abduction and internal rotation. But origin is gluteal surface of the ilium is uh, um, gluteus medius. But gluteus minimus origin is uh, gluteus surface of ilium. So almost like a medius minimus is the same, but gluteus medius uh, origin is uh, along the iliac uh, bone, so that could be different because gluteus medius is uh, uh, after the iliac bone, the rim of the iliac bone. So as if you see here, this part is the gluteus medius uh, origin, but minimus origin is uh, um, underneath. It doesn't cover the rim of the iliac bone. So gluteus surface of the limb. And then the insertion is the lateral aspect of the greater tuberosity. So minimus also greater tuberosity. So this one, both muscles are supplied by superior gluteal nerve. And then tensor fascia lata uh, start from ASIS and anchors, uh, insert onto the iliotibial band supplied by glute, uh, I'm sorry, superior gluteal nerve, and then tensor fascia lata action is hip flexion, internal rotation, abduction. So it, when I treat the diplegic cerebral palsy or quadriplegic cerebral palsy who has a genu valgus, I uh, treat spasticity in that uh, if I think the genital valgus is coming from uh, more muscular uh, spasticity rather than liver arm dysfunction, um, I start to treat medial hamstring along with tensor fascia lata to improve genital valgus. Then let's talk about sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve is um, coming from the uh, ventral rami of L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. Tibia, there's a tibia component and common peroneal component. So tibia nerve is coming from the ventral division of L4 to L S3, but common peroneal nerve or common fibular nerve is coming from the dorsal division of the L4 to S2. It doesn't include the S3. Then this uh, sciatic nerve is gonna come through the greater sciatic foramen. Once it passes greater sciatic foramen, it goes underneath of the piriformis. And then after then, um, it's gonna pass above the hip external rotators. So passes on five hip external, external rotator in the deep gluteal space. This area we call the deep gluteal space. So let's take a look deep gluteal space a little bit since we get confused with the deep gluteal uh, space syndrome versus sciatic. Huh? So this deep gluteal space is uh, um, boundary is uh, anterior to the gluteus maximus, posterior to the femur, medial to the femoral uh, linear aspera and lateral to the greater and lesser sciatic foramen. So this is the glute, deep gluteal space. And then underneath deep gluteal space, it has a piriformis, superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, and quadratus femoris. After sciatic nerve, past uh, this uh, deep gluteal space, and then sciatic nerve is gonna pass lateral to the hamstring origin, which is ischial tuberosity. After then, sciatic nerve passes lateral to the biceps femoris right after the ischial tuberosity. So I'm gonna show here. So right after, even the right after um, sciatic nerve past the uh, ischial tuberosity, still it's gonna stay lateral to the biceps femoris. 
the um, sighting nerve, we will stay. After then, um, it finishes medial to the biceps femoris. So it's gonna go to medial to the biceps femoris and split into common peroneal and tibial nerve. So there's biceps femoris initially, lateral to the biceps femoris. And then as a distally, uh, as femoral nerve distally moves, it's gonna be medial to the biceps femoris. And then it's gonna split into two nerve. And this is a semimembranosus. So let's go to next to, oh, this is the um, deep gluteal space with the uh, cadaver. Uh, so once we get rid of a deep uh, gl gluteus maximus, which is this one, it's gone. And then now you are in the deep gluteal space. And this is a cadaveric left hip with the gluteus maximus reflected. So the course of the sciatic nerve, this is a sciatic nerve, which means uh, piri we remember piriformis or other external rotators here. So underneath of the piriformis here, which is the sciatic nerve above the hip external rotators, right? And then this is the medial side and this is the lateral side. So this is gonna be um, greater trochanter here and then sighting nerve goes like this. And then number four is the um, hamstring origin, which is ischial tuberous to here. So you remember uh, at the ischial tuberous, the sighting nerve runs lateral to the ischial tuberous. This is the lateral side. So now you clear, right? This is the uh, above, which is the, um, uh, deep gluteal space. This is the medial side. This is the lateral side, which is the femoral, um, the, what's that? The aspera, the insertion of the gluteus maximus, right? And then uh, medial side is gonna be more greater less uh, uh, sciatic foramen. And so this is the deep gluteal space. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's review one more time. Sighting nerve from the ventral rami of the L4 to L3. There are two nerve components. One is tibial nerve, uh, ventral division of the L4, L3, L4 to L3. I'm sorry, L4 to L3. And the common perineal nerve is from the dorsal division of the L4 to S2. It doesn't have L3. And once Sighting nerve come out from pelvis through greater sciatic foramen, it lies underneath of the piriformis. After then, it's gonna go up to external, hip external rotators, including superior gemellus, inferior gemellus, of trait internus and quadratus femoris. After then, right after Sighting nerve pass at the uh, ischial tuberosity. At the time, sighting nerve is going to be lateral to the ischial tuberosity, which means origin of the hamstring. So, sighting nerve is going to pass the origin of lateral to the origin of a hamstring. After then, still uh, it rise and the lateral to the hamstring. Then it as the uh, sighting nerve goes distally, it's gonna stay in the medial to the biceps femoris until almost to the knee joint, but about one fifth from the proximal from the knee joint. The sighting nerve is gonna be in between semitendinosus and biceps femoris, where they're gonna split into tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve. So let's go, this is the uh, summary of the proximal part. So as you see, this is the ischial tuberosity. And then very lateral side of the tendon, which is the membrane, semi-membranosus. So this is a quite big membrane is here, but it's 
at that time is the lateral side. Later, semimembranous is going to come to the medial side when it become muscles. And next to, to the semimembranous, which is medial to the semimembranous, it's going to be conjoined to tendon with this biceps femoris and semitendinous. Initially, semitendinous muscle comes first, then by semimembranous and biceps femoris is going to come. But look at the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve is going to stay lateral to the biceps, uh, lateral to the hamstring origin. But later, it's going to go to in, the, in between the biceps femoris and semitendinous. So, or mostly we said uh, medial to the biceps femoris. And then one fifth from proximal from the knee joint and it starts to split into temporal, I'm sorry, um, the tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve. So let's say semimembranosus origin is a superolateral impression, which is a superolateral, this is a superior part, right? Superolateral impression of the ischia tuberosity and then insertion in the medial condyle of the tibia, therefore it's a hip extensor and knee flexor, right? And then semitendinosus is the lower and medial impression, lower and medial impression of the ischial tuberosity, which is a common tendon with the biceps femoris long head, and upper part of the medial tibia is gonna insert biceps femoris, Start with the conjoint tendon with the uh, semitendinosus and then uh, iliotibial band and to retinacular fiber of the lateral joint capsule. So let's do, uh, take a look uh, from the proximal part. Now, if we uh, put our probe here transverse way in the ischial tuberosity, area. And then the red uh, line, you will see this kind of findings. And then my probe is going to be on the ischial tuberosity area. Then this is the medial side and this is a lateral side. Initially, you will see on the top of ischial tuberosity, because this is the medial side, therefore what can be? It's a conjoint tendon, right? So biceps femoris and semitendinosus conjoint tendon. Then semimembranous tendon is going to be lateral superior area here. Then lateral to the whole hamstring will be sighting nerve. So this, uh, if you see the probe on the ischial tuberosity, you're gonna see this kind of uh, findings. Okay, now I'm scanning down distally, but this is almost uh, one finger breast from the distal uh, from gluteal fold or about two centimeter from the gluteal fold, one to two centimeter. They're still conjoint tendon is, you can see it. So conjoint tendon between the biceps femoris, which means this is a lateral side and the semitendinosus. Here, proximal part semitendinosus is big. By the time you see this conjoint tendon still left over, and then some intramuscular raphe, which is a fold within the muscle. And then this little triangle is a semimembranosus. Now, semimembranous end up uh, being at their ideal place, which is a semimembranous here. And then small start, it's going to get bigger from now on. At the point, semitendinosus is big. And then you see come on joint, conjoint mus, uh, tendon. And then biceps femoris. What did we learn? The sighting nerve initially is in the lateral to the hamstring, it used to be here, 
But as we scan down, a sciatic nerve is going into medial to the biceps families. So now you can see this is underneath of the conjoint tender between biceps families and semitendinosus conjoint tendon. And then if you look at the actual um, ultrasound, because I don't have that ultrasound findings, that's why I had to draw this one. But that one looks like a emblem of the Mercedes Benz. So I'm gonna show. So this is the sciatic nerve. And then this is the intramuscular raphe. And then pay attention this side. So this is one X and then fascia line become X, one line. So this shape is gonna be emblem of the Mercedes Benz. Look at this. So this is gonna be conjoint tendon. This is the fascia line for the biceps femoris. This is a fascia line for the biceps uh, semi-tendinosus and sciatic nerve is gonna sit here. I hope that you guys understood this part. I'm sure you understood very well. Next slide. So now we studied the very proximal part here and then about one to two finger breaths in this conjoint still the conjoint tendon is here we started up to here now we're gonna go down lower than that let's take a look at the uh, what ultrasound finding we're gonna see here if you put the probe here we were putting probe one two now this is the third probe you're gonna see this kind of findings so very first time semitendinosus is still there and the next is the semimembranosus and then this is going to be uh, biceps femoris. But still, I, sometimes, or we studied earlier, it can be semimembranosus, it can be semitendinosus. So you have to, once a conjoint tendon almost done, semimembranosus is in the medial side. Tendinosis is going to be in the middle, and then biceps femoris is going to be in the lateral side. So let's go down. This is a biceps femoris. Now we took a look this side. Now we're going to go middle. So now if we scan here, now it's everything is in order. So this is a semimembranosis, medial side, semitendinosis, biceps femoris. Inciting nerve always medial to the biceps femoris, sciatic nerve, the sciatic nerve. After then, I'm gonna scan down continuously to about one fifth proximal from the knee. And then let's take a look uh, if we put the probe transverse way what kind of finding we're gonna see. Uh, now the biceps, I'm sorry, semi-membranous is big here in the lower part. And then semi-tendinous is very small. It's almost getting tendon. And then the deeper one is biceps femoris short head and then biceps femoris long head. So, and then sighting nerve is gonna split in two in the middle is gonna be tibial nerve. And then lateral side is gonna be common fibular nerve or common peroneal nerve. Even though I didn't explain, you guys can understand this is the femur, and then this is the quadriceps, and this is the hip adductors. Once again, we are explaining almost at the end of the um, posterior thigh where sciatic nerve is splitting. Okay, now I'm just showing actual ultrasound findings. This is a grown up slack. Therefore, we cannot put everything in one screen. So in the middle, you can see semitendinosus is big. Biceps femoris is, is gonna be big here. And then semimembranosus is relatively 
small or okay size here. And then I'm going down now, semi, uh, biceps femoris uh, long head is getting smaller, biceps femoris uh, short head is getting bigger. And then semi tendinosis is getting smaller, bicep, uh, semi membranous is getting bigger. In between this biceps femoris or media to the biceps femoris, you can see sciatic nerve. And here you can see sciatic nerve in the middle. This is a child leg. So this is gonna be um, like one screen. You can see whole hamstring. Now this is the video. Uh, we'll show you the hamstring and how the size is changing in the distal area. So this is the hip adductor magnus in the medial side. This is gonna be semi-membranous because it's medial side. This is gonna be semi-tendinosus and you see sighting nerve. Therefore, this is gonna be semi, this much big is gonna be biceps femoris. Okay. So now stop here. Now we move, as we scan down, semi-membranous is getting bigger, semi-tendinosus and biceps femoris is gonna be like this, medial to the biceps femoris sighting nerve. Okay, now I'm gonna scan down. Membranous is getting bigger. And then tendinous is, is getting smaller. I'm gonna go down. See here, whoopsie. Sorry, because I was going to show. So the semitendinous is getting smaller, but at some point the semitendinous looks like an eggplant. That time, pay attention to sciatic nerve. After then, sciatic nerve is gonna split in two. Not this uh, video you can see, but later video you can see better. Okay, so here, I'm gonna go again, see here. Eggplant shape here, you can see. So eggplant shape. And semi-membranous is huge, right? And then biceps, uh, femoris, long head, so getting smaller and short head. So that's it, that's the sciatic nerve. I'm gonna stop here and then let's go to next. Next is the sciatic nerve uh, splitting uh, part. So sciatic nerve is gonna split in tibia nerve and common peroneal nerve. So here, this is the eggplant shape of the semitendinosus and biceps femoris is huge. And then long head and short head. Let's take a look. Pay attention here, sighting nerve. It's gonna split in two here, you guys see? It split it one and two, right? Sighting nerve, this is the long head of the biceps, short head of the biceps, so which means sighting nerves in the medial to the biceps femoris and then splitting two. So what the uh, one among two, one, of, one out of two, which is close to the biceps is gonna be common peroneal nerve. Uh, one out of two, which is close to the semimembranous is gonna be tibial nerve. And the pay attention to common peroneal nerve. Okay, let's go, go. It's getting bigger here. And the tibial nerve here, common peroneal nerve here, tibial nerve here. Common yeah, peroneal nerve is going almost close to skin, but above the fibula head, right? The, so here you can, your common peroneal nerve is gonna be compressed here. So this is gonna be, I think, our last slide. So why don't we take a look one more time? So here, uh, splitting two here, one and two, tibial nerve, common peroneal nerve, tibial nerve, common peroneal nerve is going, going, going yeah, close to the skin, and then fibula head here, and then skin is on the skin, common peroneal nerve, you can see here. Okay, I think this is our last uh, slide.
Uh, so I thank you very much for paying attention to this uh, lecture uh, on low limb uh, ultrasound workshop part one, uh, proximal part of the leg. Um, so this lecture is given to you guys to um, study before you attend the live streaming on Monday. And we're gonna review uh, posture part of the thigh and medial part of the thigh, anterior part of the thigh. But I don't know we are able to finish uh, this old muscle in one hour on Monday. However, please study this PowerPoint lecture first before you attend our live streaming on Monday. Thank you so much and then see you on Monday.